PBS is proud to present the 32nd Hispanic Heritage Awards. Celebrating Hispanic achievements in leadership, sports, and entertainment. Join us at the Kennedy Center for the 32nd Hispanic Heritage Awards. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from... Hospice of the Valley, a not-for-profit community hospice for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. HOV.org. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Tonight on Cronkite News, we'll find out how medical professionals and city officials are working to combat the opioid crisis in Flagstaff. Then see how One Valley Health System is using its employees' innovative ideas to improve the quality of your care. And a group of local artists share what Hispanic Heritage Month means to them. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Mackenzie Pavisich. And I'm Christopher Lindsay. Thank you for joining us. The July death of Northern Arizona University football player Malik Noshi was caused by an opioid overdose that led to the renewed awareness of the impact of the opioid epidemic in Arizona. Flagstaff has become a hot spot in the state's opioid crisis. Reporter Jenna Yanoni went to this city in Northern Arizona to find out how treatment centers are handling the problem. Jenna? That's right. Arizona has had more than 3,600 suspected opioid deaths since the summer of 2017. In Coconino County, there's been an alarming rise in opioid-related hospital visits, which is why we wanted to know how the community is rallying together to fight this issue. Flagstaff is taking action against opioids. The community is weaving together two programs, one focusing on crisis response and the other on preventing overdoses and making treatment centers available. The goal is to put a stop to this problem that's taken and damaged so many lives. I will say Flagstaff, um, it's a very generous town. There's a lot of um, amazing organizations and people who don't just talk about helping, but are committed to giving that hand to people and just helping them to have a better life. According to local health officials, opioid-related hospital visits in Coconino County increased 285% from 2011 to 2016. To try and prevent additional deaths, the government distributes naloxone to locals, a common way to treat narcotic overdoses. The opioid crisis response program really works to sort of connect the dots for people who have experienced an opioid overdose or who are deemed to be at risk of an overdose. Survivors are connected with a community health worker and a peer support specialist. The county and state government also offer an overdose prevention program. Locals say their strong sense of community is key to having a successful recovery. Alex Cutler previously struggled with substance abuse, but now works at a treatment center. He thinks that Flagstaff offers a unique approach to recovery. The community that's built around this place, um, I feel like the word community is like becoming kind of like a cliche, like everybody needs community, but like it's so true. Like as human beings, I feel like we really need that. And as a human being in recovery, like absolutely, I needed support. I needed people to get over that hump of how to stay sober and, you know, live happily. So Back to Basics uses activities-based recovery strategies such as cooking and outdoor expeditions. The program's therapist says that treating the mental and emotional side of addiction requires patience. The single greatest predictor of long-term success uh, to maintain sobriety, no matter what the substance is, is length of time and treatment. They need to catch up. They started using when they were maybe early teens, uh, and uh, they've missed some developmental, you know, emotional sort of ability to cope with things. And that is length of time for them to catch up that way and, and learn who they are. Jennifer Leland now works helping others get out of the cycle of addiction she knows well. The patient, she says, must be ready to commit to helping themselves. They have to want it. They have to be willing. I've been in recovery myself for seven years. I was, um, I was into methamphetamines for about 25 years. I was, in, I was an addict and I got clean. 
The Arizona Department of Health continues to track the number of suspected overdoses and deaths. As of last week, nearly 60,000 doses of naloxone have been distributed statewide. In the Broadcast Center, I'm Jenny Anoni for Cronkite News. Republicans in Congress are usually backing President Donald Trump, but this week they are pushing back against the president's sudden decision to pull U.S. troops out of Syria. And Senator Martha McSally is one of those who says it's a bad idea. Cronkite News reporter Heather Cumberlidge has more on that story from our Washington Bureau. A bad idea, McSally says, because pulling U.S. troops out of Syria abandons Kurdish fighters who are our allies against ISIS and leaves them vulnerable to attack by their long-term adversaries, the Turks. We cannot tolerate a NATO ally now coming in and mowing them down. Uh, that is just not the right message, and it's not good for the safety of America. So I really hope it's reconsidered. McSally's statement Tuesday put her in line with Arizona Democratic Senator Kirsten Sinema, who said it would ultimately endanger the U.S. In a statement earlier this week, Sinema said, Abandoning our partners in the war on the Islamic State will only jeopardize America's security, strengthen Iran and Russia, and put our allies at greater risk. But Trump defended the move, saying ISIS has been defeated and that U.S. troops cannot keep fighting an endless war in the Middle East. Our military has never been stronger, but we're now acting as police. We're, we're policing areas. We're doing jobs that other countries should be doing. We're doing jobs, frankly, that Europe should be doing. We're doing jobs that Russia should be doing, that Iran should be doing, that Iraq, Turkey, Syria should be doing. They should be doing this. We shouldn't be doing it. We're 7,000 miles away. A growing number of Republicans say we should be there. 68 senators voted in January to keep troops in Syria, saying withdrawal would risk hard-won gains. South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, normally a staunch defender of Trump, called the withdrawal a big win for ISIS. Despite Trump's threat to destroy Turkey's economy if it attacked the Kurds in northern Syria, that's just what Turkish forces did yesterday. That was no surprise to Sanam Mohammed, a Kurdish member of the Syrian Democratic Council. The Turkish government wanted the war. They didn't want peace. They only know the language of war. Graham is backing a measure to impose sanctions on Turkey unless it pulls back and at least 10 Senate Republicans have gone on the record against the troop withdrawal. Turkey needs to be deterred. Erdogan needs to change his course right now, and I think we need to stand with the Kurds. In Washington, Heather Cumberlidge, Cronkite News. On the House side, not everyone in Arizona's delegation has weighed in, but those who have are giving more predictably partisan responses. With Republican Andy Biggs and Paul Gozar supporting withdrawal, Democrats Greg Stanton, Ruben Gallego, and Raul Grealva criticizing it. New developments today in the ongoing Ukraine controversy that has rocked the White House, this time involving the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. Two associates of Giuliani were arrested at Dulles Airport this morning and indicted on charges of violating campaign finance rules. Federal prosecutors say they had one-way tickets out of the country. The men were arrested along with two others in connection to the Giuliani, to Giuliani, excuse me, and the effort to get Ukraine to investigate the Biden family and allegedly gave hundreds of thousands of dollars to a Trump-allied super PAC illegally. And the House's impeachment inquiry has issued another subpoena as it tries to get to the bottom of the Ukraine scandal. House Democrats have subpoenaed outgoing Energy Secretary Rick Perry for his potential involvement in the Ukraine scandal. This marks the ninth subpoena issued by the inquiry in the inquiry so far, with orders being issued to everyone from Vice President Mike Pence to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The White House said this week that it does not plan to cooperate with the investigation. And as a response to a recent advertising push in support of the president, the Democratic group acronym has announced a $1 million ad campaign in support of impeachment. The new campaign is launching in swing states like Michigan and North Carolina, and even right here in Arizona. The ads are intended to help voters better understand the Ukraine scandal and ongoing impeachment inquiry. If the first run of ads is successful, the group plans to expand the campaign nationwide. A trip to the emergency room usually involves stress, time, and a lot of questions. How quickly will you see a doctor, get your test results, or hear a diagnosis? Banner Health is trying to make that process a little less stressful. Delaney White explains how the hospital is focused on innovation. Banner has created an innovation group with people from across different fields in order to make the patient experience better. 
So the overall goal of the Banner Innovation Group and Innovation Holistically a Banner is to truly deliver upon our mission, which is to make healthcare easier so that life can be better. And the way in which we do that is through um, thinking about the patient experience from a completely new and different angle. The Innovation Group is made up of a team of 15 people that work in fields from engineering to communications. Jeff Johnson, Vice President of Digital Business and Innovation at Banner, says the group has already helped clear up some of the confusion that comes with a trip to the ER. And oftentimes when a customer comes into or a patient comes into emergency room, they, it's overwhelming. It's a stressful time in their life, um, they're, they're concerned, there's a lot going on that they don't know about and we've created a chat bot that sort of is a digital assistant that guides them through that. It's not to replace any of the skilled humans and clinicians in the emergency room, but it's sort of a pet companion that's giving them added information about what to expect next, what's going on behind the scenes, and so they feel involved in their care. We wanted to really open up the lines of communication and provide extreme transparency. And, and as such, we created a whole new way of communicating with our patients during that experience. And we used a chat bot to do that. And um, that hasn't really been done in healthcare before. Johnson also spoke about upcoming projects designed to improve patient care. Another example that we're just about to um, introduce to our customers is what we call a digital triage tool. And it's a really smart AI-driven kind of bot that helps the customer better understand the symptoms that they're experiencing. Another upcoming project uses digital therapeutics to assist expecting mothers in managing their vitals. This is a digital companion that gives them a way to do blood pressure readings in their own home and have that blood pressure measurement come back to their physician, as well as to give them information on a mobile app as to how to best navigate their pregnancy. These projects are expected to be available to patients by the end of the year. At the digital desk, Delaney White, Cronkite News. How is identity defined when it always doesn't fit in just one word? We explore Hispanic Heritage Month through the vision of artists in the Valley with a bilingual report. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental, covering sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people to see those kids drink clean water for the first time. It's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. Each year, Hispanic Heritage Month celebrates the history, culture, and contributions of Hispanic Americans. Our Cronkite Noticias reporter Karina Espinoza spoke with local artists about what their heritage means to them. Here in Arizona, more than one in four households speak a second language at home, primarily Spanish, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. But I learned that Hispanic heritage doesn't mean the same thing for the rich and diverse cultural traditions that we have here in Phoenix. So we let these artists tell us what this means to them in both English and Spanish. I identify as I'm half Czechoslovakian and I'm half Mexican. So my friends call me a Czechana, but they call me a, a Czech mix. La palabra hispana yo no la conozco. Uh, yo soy chicano. Me identifico como Mexicana y Americana, nací en México. Yo nací en, uh, en un tiempo donde el, el, el movimiento de arte 
y la política y el poder, César Chávez, nos nombramos chicanos. Yo me siento que soy de aquí y de allá. Me confundí poquito al crecer de que pues, soy chicana, soy americana, se me va a olvidar el español y, y no, mi familia no, no dejó que se me olvidara. I was born in La Paz, Bolivia. Bolivia, for those who don't know, is in the center of South America. Our identity comes out through our culture and our music. Mi obra es como una doc documentación de, mis, de mi historia personal como migrante, abstractamente. He dado clases de todo a todas las edades. Mi favorito es el grupo de los adolescentes porque siento que son los que, algunos que necesitan más dirección y es en donde yo me identifico porque yo necesitaba mucha dirección como adolescente, pero me gusta recordarles de sus raíces. Yo, yo uso mi arte para educar la comunidad y celebrar lo que hemos uh, sufrido y lo que es uh, una persona de color. An artist can't help but to put themselves into their artwork. Right? Even if I intentionally tried not to involve my culture or who I am, it just comes out because it's who you are. When an artist is creating, they create with their heart, they create with their soul and their passion. I'm inspired by, by Frida Kahlo. I'm inspired by um, Mexican folk artists, like I said earlier. I'm inspired by luchadores. I'm inspired by not necessarily the religious aspect of certain imagery, but the spiritual aspect. We are so diverse. I mean, you have Spain, you have Central America, you have Mexico, you have South America, and every single one of those countries has their own music, their own culture, their own food. Uh, that's hard to have in just one month. are made up of different cultures, right? But there are some things that are the same to all of us. The hint of the color, our spirit, our love of life, our love of cultura. Uh, those are things that, that, that bind us. Rosa, Cronkite News. Still ahead, if Arizonans know one weather event that is in extreme heat, it's flooding. We'll show you the brand new technology helping residents predict floods before they even happen. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth. There are new traffic cameras in Phoenix and Flagstaff that are focused not on how fast you drive, but how fast floodwaters rise. This new technology is called FloodAware. Its goal is to alert residents and first responders about flooding before it even happens. Scientists and engineers at Arizona State University, the University of Arizona, Northern Arizona University, and other schools created it to try to solve the problem of urban flooding. 
Flood Aware uses traffic cameras pointed downward at rain gauges to sense when water is rising. An app is currently in development as well. There are six cameras in Flagstaff and five in Phoenix. This project is still in its preliminary phase, but has the potential to expand in the future. You can read about the full story at cronkinews.azpbs.org. Now, I don't know about you, Chris, but I am planning on going to Oktoberfest and the fair this weekend. Going to both. Yes, both. Annika, <laughs> Count that me possible? in as yeah. well. And a few others. There's actually several festivals. I want to nickname this weekend the Festival Weekend because there's so many. So let me go ahead and share that with you along with the weather. It's been a beautiful day all over Arizona today. The only colder part of Arizona right now is up in the north. The Grand Canyon is right around 53 degrees, but that's as cool as you're going to get. And then if we go look at tomorrow, it's still about the same all over Arizona. Our hotter temperatures are going to be in the south, like in Yuma, 86, Lake Havasu City, 82. And if we look at the valley tomorrow, everywhere is sitting just around 90 degrees give or take a degree or so of course our cooler temperatures in the valley are going to be let's see here in Whitman in Cave Creek at 84 not too hot not too cold just right I would say and as we look at those festivals I was talking about it's the Phoenix Greek Festival so if you like pita bread this is your time to go and la the Latino Pride Festival you can eat your fill of tacos hear some great music and then go again to eat tacos at the Arizona Taco Festival with, of course, the Chihuahua beauty pageant. Those Chihuahuas are just too cute. Going into the weekend here, it's sunny and beautiful and about 91 degrees. And if we go into the rest of the week, you're going to see a lot of the same. It will heat up ever so slightly to just about 93 by the end of the week and mid 60s at night. I'm Annika Abbott in the Cronkite News Weather Center. After the break, October is National Bullying Prevention Month. Find out how Valley students are taking part in a national campaign to promote kindness in the classroom. With wildfires, a scarcity of water, and other environmental issues facing the Earth today, it's critical to stay up to date with local impacts of a changing climate. That's why we created Elemental Covering Sustainability, a multimedia collaboration between public television and radio stations. From climate change to water conservation to renewable energy and much more, Elemental covers the latest in sustainability news. Find our stories on our website, elementalreports.com. Stay in the know, on the go. At Cronkite News, we work hard to report the facts and keep you updated, whether we're on set or on the scene. Taking it from the studio to the field. So I'm here in South Phoenix. In Phoenix, we're just a click away. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, or find us online at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Millions of people die every year from drinking dirty water. I would never have felt I had the ability to do something without ASU pushing me. We built filtration systems out of local materials with the people. To see those kids drink clean water for the first time, it's the most rewarding feeling that you can ever have. I went to ASU because I wanted to change the world. The thing I never would have expected is how the world would have changed me. Welcome to another edition of Cronkite Sports Now. I'm Taylor Rocha. Let's talk sports. For the latest on local sports and beyond, we've got you covered. Let's do this thing. We challenge reporters to go beyond you know, a game story. We want stories with depth. It's just a really a crucial step from the college um, experience into the professional experience while you're still in school. At Cronkite Sports Now, watch the journalists of tomorrow cover sports today. This October, schools and organizations are raising awareness for National Bullying Prevention Month. Cronkite News reporter Mariah Gallegos visited Gila Bend Library, where they found a unique way to promote kindness. While students are enjoying the fall break, some spent their time using paint to decorate rocks to share their ideas of kindness with others. Okay, I'm 
normal school. I just need the right door to kind. Students gathered around a table, sharing different colors of paint. You want to use mine? To decorate and write positive messages on rocks. My rock is to not tell no one like bad things, like bad words, or say like whatever whatever they get hurt with, good vibes. Library teacher Alexis Fernandez wanted to find a way for the kids to join in on National Bullying Prevention Month. Bullying is kind of like, it's a big thing everywhere, you know, and I feel like especially in smaller communities, it can be easier to think, you know, we're just joking around, but joking around can affect people and, and affect kids and their feelings. And Atsi knows how those jokes can really affect someone. You have to be kind, like, People, like, I've seen that they get killed for how much hurt they got hurt. The rocks are a part of a national project known as Kindness Rocks. Student yeah. Radio Mendoza hopes people like put their so words cool. into action. Showing other people how they should be treating, how they should be treating um, everybody in, t in, um, in public and to treat other, other people right and don't you know anybody's feelings. And while each student writes their own message, you need to be kind. What they want students to take away is we don't have to be best friends with everyone, but you should be kind to everyone regardless. The library teachers are going to spread the decorated rocks throughout the local park with hopes that someone will find them on a day they need just a few encouraging words. In the broadcast center, Mariah Gallegos, Cronkite News. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on the PBS NewsHour. I'm Judy Woodruff tonight on the NewsHour one-on-one -on -one with Secretary of State Pompeo talking about Turkey, China, and Ukraine. Coming up after Cronkite News and Arizona Horizon on Arizona PBS. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Next time on A Chef's Life. In the South, we are known for fried chicken lovers. That's us. Here, chicky. Ah! <laughs> okay, now this is personal. I've heard that this is the place to have livers. You need a liver, a gizzard, some fried chicken. You'll be set. Tonight at 7.30 on Arizona PBS. Next time on Shakespeare and Hathaway, Lou and Frank are under criminal investigation. Someone's setting me up. If the team can't solve the mystery... With Shakespeare and Hathaway. They could wind up in jail. You don't say it. Shakespeare and Hathaway. All new tonight at 9 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS. A community service of Arizona State University. See this patio? There used to be a motorcycle sitting there, a bike I didn't use and didn't want, so I donated it to public television, and they took care of everything. In addition to supporting my favorite programs, I earned a tax deduction. Turn something you don't need into something you really want. Contact the Vehicle Donation Program. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Get the inside scoop on what's happening at Arizona PBS. Become an insider. You'll receive weekly updates on the most anticipated upcoming programs and events. Get the insider delivered to your email inbox. Visit azpbs.org to sign up today. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. There's never been a more important time to make sure facts and the truth are driving conversation. Washington Week is an island of civil discourse in a chaotic media environment. On Friday night, we gather the best reporters in the nation to unpack what's really happening and have a conversation that's not about point of view, but about informing the American people. Washington Week, all new Friday night at seven on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from 
Whitfield Nursery, proud to support Arizona PBS, a valley tradition since 1946. Over 200 acres of Arizona-grown trees, citrus, and palms. Complete custom design and installation. And Whitfield Nursery still does the digging. WhitfieldNursery.com. Deanne Griebel, now with Moores and Cabot Investments, serving investors since 1890, proudly supports quality programming on 8 Arizona PBS, 480-725-9602. H.A.'s Fine Foods, offering gourmet appetizers, fine wines for entertaining, and decadent desserts for all your special occasions. Find 10 Valley locations at H.A.'sFineFoods.com. H.A.'s, purveyors of fine foods. Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, the constitutional ramifications of the president refusing to cooperate with the House impeachment inquiry. Also tonight, we'll hear about a project that celebrates Arizona women who've helped transform lives and build better communities. And a sneak peek at the U.S. Army Field Band's upcoming concert to celebrate the Grand Canyon. That's next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Arizona PBS, members of your PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors today called on County Assessor Paul Peterson to resign in the wake of his arrest in an adoption fraud case. Peterson was arrested Tuesday on charges that he arranged for pregnant women from the Marshall Islands to fly to Arizona to give birth and then put the children up for adoption. In a statement, the Board of Supervisors said, quote, Peterson's prompt resignation will ensure his legal issues don't distract him from leading the county assessor's office. Peterson also faces multiple charges in Utah and Arkansas in relation to the alleged adoption scheme. At last report, Peterson remains in the Maricopa County Jail on $500,000 cash bond. And two associates of Rudy Giuliani have been arrested on charges of violating campaign finance rules. Lawyers for the two men arrived in federal court in Virginia today. The men were arrested yesterday while trying to leave the country. They face federal criminal charges in connection to alleged efforts to get Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden and his son. Responses today from President Trump and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. I don't know them. Uh, I don't know about them. I don't know what they do. But uh, I don't know, maybe they were clients of Rudy, you'd have to ask Rudy, I just don't know. Giuliani's been involved up to his neck in this entire mess. He has an obligation to testify under oath so he can be asked questions and so this can come to light. Also on the impeachment front, President Trump is refusing to cooperate with the House impeachment inquiry, calling it, quote, illegitimate and invalid. The House is moving ahead with subpoenas and other impeachment actions. Is all of this leading to a constitutional crisis? We ask attorney Robert McWhorter, author of Bills, Quills and Stills, an illustrated history of the Bill of Rights. Good to see you again. 